and welcome back to By Myself But Not Alone. This is episode 28, Cleveland, Ohio. Now the Cleveland show was the one show on the tour that didn't seem like it could come and go soon enough. I had made up my mind early on the tour that I was going to try not to look too far ahead, just enjoy every step of the way, and I had been successful at that at this point. I was certain that the much needed energy boost that I had gotten from seeing my friend Gracie in Raleigh was going to be enough to carry me through the end of the leg. But that severe cold in Cincinnati was really starting to take its toll. In two short days, the leg would be over. I'd be heading home to rest up. But in that moment, I, I just was not confident that I was going to make it. My ear problem was getting progressively worse. I had actually given a good amount of thought to trying to find a doctor when we got to Cleveland. And the only option would have probably been ER. That would end up being an inevitable time-consuming nightmare, so I, I made up my mind that the only way I would resort to that is if I had no other choice. So anyway, at the end of the last episode, we slept in, we got up, and we had our, our breakfast of Kinder Eggs and coffee in Cincinnati before hopping on I-71 North, heading to Cleveland. It was a nice little trip of about 250 miles. There was snow in the forecast, but that held off, so we made it there without incident in about four hours. Once again, as on the trip to Cincinnati, it was just too darn cold outside to do any messing around. On the way there, Michelle managed to find us a nice little hotel. The rooms were pretty small, but it was clean, and the heater worked, and at that point, that's all that really mattered. It didn't get any warmer outside. In fact, the temperature dropped a couple degrees, but I was just more than happy to be in Cleveland where we'd finish the fourth leg. And then, after the show, if, if, if some kind of big snowstorm came in and we got snowed in for a couple weeks, it wouldn't be the end of the world. We got checked in, we got ready, and we headed into town. We drove around for a little while to check things out before heading to Panini's Bar and Grill for the pre-party. The party was organized by Jason Garkowski and our friends in Dyer's Cleave, and I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, I really love that chapter name. When we got inside, I was kind of surprised to see such a good-sized group of people because of the weather. It was cold, but that didn't seem to stop anyone. I guess a lot of, a lot of the locals are used to that, but there were quite a few people from, from all parts of the country, all parts of the world, actually. It seemed like most people had eaten or, or they were eating when we got there, and everyone said the food was great, so we decided that's where we'd get started. And let me tell you what, they were all right. It was great food with fantastic service. I give that bar a fat boy five-star rating of excellence. After we ate, we had a drink. I did a couple interviews. Jason was hooking everybody up with stickers and guitar picks from previous shows that Met Club had provided. He also gave us some really cool pins. That's where I got my Atlanta pin for Gracie. The party was a hit. It was a really cool evening and great company. And once again, I want to say thanks to Jason and the guys in Dyer's Cleave. We had a great time and thank you for that. We hung out a little while longer before heading back to the hotel. Once again, we had another big day ahead of us. When we got back, we were just so relieved that we hadn't encountered another Ohio style whiteout, I'll call it, as we had you know, going back to the hotel from Cincinnati. Didn't take long at all and we were both out cold. When I woke up the next morning, I felt like absolute death. I laid there for a minute contemplating tapping out. I, I literally thought about just calling it. Right then the door opened, the light blinded me. Michelle came in, she had two cups of coffee, she handed me one. What happened next kind of woke me up better than the coffee did. Michelle was just a little bit out of character. I know you're, you're used to hearing me talk a lot of crap about her because I like to do that and most of it's true. But what she did next, uh, I'm never going to forget this. She sat on the bed opposite me and she just stared at me for a minute. And she said, come on, man, get up. You didn't come this far to go back now. We're here. We're in Cleveland. This coffee tastes like absolute shit. And once you get a taste of it, you're going to be inspired. We have to get out there and find a McDonald's. Come on, man, we can do this. That whole little moment struck me as odd, but it was cool. And like I said, it really woke me up. I said, hell with it. I got up, we got ready, and we headed out. It didn't take us long to find a McDonald's. It never does, unless you're in Canada. Uh, this was going to be a triple, triple cup day. Double dose and one to carry. It wasn't long after that, and we were arriving at the Quicken Loans Arena, which is part of a cool little complex down there. It's, it's kind of attached to, to where the Cleveland Indians play, and it, under any other circumstance, I'd have been all over that place. I'd have headed on over and, and really checked it out. But although I was wide awake at this point, I was cold, and I still felt like death, so that just didn't happen. Like I said a few minutes ago, it was colder on the temperature than it had been in Cincinnati, but we weren't like right next to a river getting blasted by the winds of death. There was some wind, but we were in luck. The location of our line was on the side of the building that blocked most of the wind, so it looked like we just might make it. When we actually got up to the building, we discovered the greatest line surprise on the entire tour. There was a little uh, tent room attached to one of the entrances. I'm not sure if it was a VIP entrance or a general admission entrance for the, the people that got down there early, 
but I did know it wasn't the black ticket entrance. We all knew that it was a temporary greatness and that we'd inevitably have to move out to our black ticket line, but that that little tent room pretty much saved us for a couple hours. Our friend Dustin Stroll was there early and he told us that he got lucky and he scored a hotel right around the corner. He asked if any of us wanted to come back and hang out in his room for a couple hours before lining up, but uh, I told him I, I wasn't going to be able to do that because if I did that, I was not going to come back out and miss the show. We got to hang out for a little while before he headed back to his room and I got busy. I did a couple interviews. Right about then, our friend Svet showed up. If you've been watching all along, you'll remember Svet is the Bulgarian from Connecticut that rode with us from Tulsa to Arkansas. Well, he flew back into Cleveland for the last show of the fourth leg. We were going to take him and drop him off after the show at his Airbnb, and then I was going to give him a ride to the airport the next day. So he and I walked over to the parking garage to put his bag away, and when we got back, Dustin had reappeared. Again, if you've been watching all along, Dustin's the guy that brought me a care package full of shirts and all kinds of other little goodies, and he gave it to me at the state college show. Well, I had finally found a way to get even with him for that, and that wasn't his original intention. He was, he was just giving me shirts that he didn't wear anymore. He wasn't looking to get anything out of it, but... I needed to get even in my mind, and, and I thought I had done that. But at the show in Cleveland, when he got back from his hotel, he walked up and he handed me two cassettes. One was Kill Em All, one was Ride the Lightning, one was on Bonsai Label, that's the original label in Canada, and the other one was Electra Made for Canada. That got me super excited because I've been collecting Metallica cassettes since 1986. Dustin knew that, and he really brightened my day by delivering those, but I still haven't gotten even with him yet, and Dustin... I know you're watching. I'm going to get even with you on that, but I do appreciate the fact that you, you thought of me. That really made my day, and it really helped me get through the horrible circumstance of how I felt there in Cleveland. So I appreciate that, and I'm going to square up with you one of these days. We all just hung out in that little tent room. It didn't take long for it to fill up. It was quite a little party in there that day, but as you know, all good things must end, and it wasn't much longer. We were all heading out of the tent to get in line over at our black ticket line. We stood there for maybe another hour freezing to death and they finally took pity on us and they opened the doors and let us line up inside. While in line inside, I found a couple more black ticket holders who hadn't received their patch yet and we took care of that. After about 30 or 40 minutes inside, I really started to get worried because the pressure on my head was just un unbearable almost and I couldn't feel my feet at all. I really felt near the end, but somebody saved me by handing me their their little hand warmers and I, I actually put them down inside of my shoes on top of my feet and right before they took us down to the floor I got a dose of relief I started to, the feeling was starting to come back in my feet when we got in there I headed straight for the rail forfeiting my walk around everyone in the little group that I'd been hanging out with and lined up with the whole time got a spot on the rail I just stood there the whole time not saying a word to anyone I was just happy to be there in the comfort of the warm building and I was happy to be alive. I can honestly say I don't remember much of Jim's show at all that night. I was in a serious daze. I just sat there and I watched as the, the sold out crowd of eight, over 18,500 people filled the auditorium. Pretty soon Jim was saying goodnight. We were listening to our favorite little ACDC song just before we heard the angels singing and Metallica was on. The crowd was as intense as all the others had been. They were super excited because it was the first time in about 10 years that Metallica returned to Cleveland. Looking back after the show, the set list was right in line with all the others, but as far as my memory, there were, there were really only two songs that stuck out that night. Halo on Fire was back in the lineup. That's such a great song. I just love to hear it live. And Master of Puppets for a reason other than the fact that it was played. As you all know, that song was played every night, all 35 shows on the tour. So hearing it wasn't a surprise. The surprise came in what happened while we were hearing it. We happened to be right in front of the microphone that James came to when they started playing puppets. After the second verse, he looked right at me. He gave me that nod, aimed, and threw the pick right at me. As many of you know, sometimes James will just fling his pick and grab another one and keep playing. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the song structure, why he does it the way he does it. But then there are those times when, for a scant moment, he'll, he'll look right at you as if he's taking target practice and he'll put it right where he wants it. Well, that night I was fortunate enough to be one of his targets. It all happened in slow motion. The pick was just flying right at me. It hit right on the black ticket patch, and when I went to grab it, it kind of shot off to the right. I didn't get it. I grabbed my phone, I hit the flashlight, I got down there, and I was crawling around trying to find it. I stayed down there a little longer than I probably should have, but at this point on the tour, I still did not have a white fang, and this one played Master of Puppets. Then I felt something really strange. It was like someone fell on me, but there was no pressure. I turned around and I stood up, and what had happened was my friend Svet had done an incredible gymnastics move. 
he had gone over me from the left. He was two people down, and, and somehow he managed to, to do a crazy move, and he came back with the pick that I couldn't find. I didn't really put it all together until I looked left, and Svet leaned in, and he looked me right in the eye, and he said, this was meant for you. We all saw that and he put it in my hand. All things considered, looking back, it, it really didn't surprise me. Svet is a man of honor. He's a classy guy, and anyone who knows him knows that. Now, I'm not sure what meant more to me in that moment. The fact that I had a white fang that played two verses of Master of Puppets, or the fashion in which it was delivered to me. The combination makes it truly priceless. I can't imagine owning a greater pick, and I want to say thank you, Svet. I will never forget that moment. I would have used Master of Puppets as the song in the end of the video for that very reason, but I had just used it in Cincinnati in my strategic attempt to use each song from the tour at least once, once in an episode. I ended up using Halo on Fire this episode because it's such a great song. I hadn't used it yet. And something else about the video, as you may remember in Raleigh, my battery died, but my friend Gracie hooked me up with her footage. So that took care of that one. In Cincinnati, I almost died due to the, the extreme cold and I just put my phone away and I didn't take any pictures. My friend Charlie hooked me up with some footage for that. Here in Cleveland, I actually took some pictures, but if you could see them, you'd probably laugh. I have no idea how they turned out so bad, except for my, I'll blame it on my excessive state of confusion. So I called on my friend Jason Garkowski, feeling that since this was his hometown show, a little piece of his perspective would be appropriate. He was more than happy to oblige, and I'd like to say thanks for contributing those pictures. It really helped me out of this little jam I got myself in. At the end of the show, I got my two Cleveland picks, so that, along with the White Fang, made it a stellar, stellar pick night in Cleveland. After the show, we headed back to the car. We hooked up with our friend Ryan from Pennsylvania. We gave him his bottle of Black and Batch 81. You may remember uh, Chris Yergis gave it to him in Nashville and he put it in my trunk and asked me to, to take it to Cleveland. I was kind of hoping he had forgotten about that, but honestly, there was no chance of that happening. We all said goodnight. Michelle, Svet, and I jumped in the car. We headed off to find his Airbnb. We dropped him off and finally we made it back to the hotel. I was so glad that we had made it. The leg was complete, 28 down, seven to go. I would drop Michelle and Svet off at the airport and later that next day I would be at home. But Michelle had other plans. That night in the hotel, she told me that we really needed to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the next day. She and Svet had both been, she had been talking to him about it and he agreed. They both agreed that, that I really needed to see that place. And there was just really no reason to be in Cleveland and to go home without doing it. Both of their flights were leaving later in the day. We had plenty of time to do it, but I honestly didn't, I didn't feel like I had it in me. I told her it was a good reason for us to do another road trip after the tour was over. I told her all sorts of things and right in the middle of making every excuse I could think of, I fell asleep. The next morning when I woke up, I would have much preferred to hear the birds chirping, but instead I heard Michelle's voice. Come on, get up. We got, we got things to see. We're going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She seemed pretty pumped up. I said, oh my God, I hate you. Who are you anyway? Can't you just go away? She said, if you don't get up, I'm going to have to punch you awake. Here, I got you some more coffee. Now get up. She sounded like she really meant business, so I just said, ugh, and I forced myself to get up. I looked right at her and I shook my head. She stared back at me for a minute. She said, come on, Svetty's waiting. We're gonna have a great day. The coffee was already cold, so I just slammed it. I let it kick in for a minute. I looked right at her and I said, do we really have to do this? We can come back. It'll be an awesome, awesome road trip. Let's just make plans and come back. We'll do it next time, please. She thought about it for a minute. She said, I, I know you're not feeling good. You really don't look too good. And no, we really don't have to go. You can just drop us off at the airport, that'll be fine. But of all the people I know, you need to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and we're here in Cleveland, so I, I hope you think about it. I said, fine, we'll do it. I still didn't wanna do it, but I went and took a shower. We got checked out, we got some more coffee. We picked Svet up and headed down to the Hall of Fame. And by the time we got there, I really wasn't feeling too bad at all. We went on in and I'm really not gonna get into everything we saw because that would take days, literally. We saw so much music history, it was, it was amazing. So many of the things I saw in there just blew my mind. I had goosebumps the whole time. It really was worth doing and you know I hate to admit when Michelle's right, but I gotta say it, she was right and I'm glad that she made me go. Of all the people to run in, to, I was surprised to run into Jason and Val. I told him that I wouldn't have imagined seeing him there that day because he lives in Cleveland and I figured he'd, he'd seen that place a hundred times. He obviously had seen everything in there quite a few times, but they changed it up and it had been a while. He said it just seemed like the right thing to do and, and he was correct. I was really glad we ran into him because of all people, Jason could really appreciate what I had in my pocket. 
I pulled out my No Life Till Leather demo tape. Most of you already know this, but that's Metallica's first demo tape. The songs on it became Kill Em All. I brought it with me because I knew there was a chance going to Cleveland that we'd end up in the museum, and I figured it would make some pretty cool pictures to be holding a No Life Till Leather cassette with the, the background being Metallica's display in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Jason's eyes got really big when I pulled it out, and we both kind of laughed because to onlookers, we figured it would seemed that I, I, I grabbed it out of a display or something, but uh, he posed for a couple pictures with it. I put it away and I pulled it out a couple other times throughout the museum. Again, I could go on for hours and hours about all the cool stuff I saw aside from the Metallica items, but I just want to mention one thing that I saw that I felt honored to be in such close proximity to. The one thing that really jumped out of me, it was on the third floor all the way at the end of our little Hall of Fame experience. And it was the outfit worn by crazy ass Andre Ice Cold 3000 in Outcast Hey Ya video. I really loved that guy and there was his outfit right in front of me. We finally headed out and on our way through the gift shop, I picked up postcards and a souvenir lighter that we'd be using on the fifth leg. I took Michelle and Svet to the airport. I hit a Burger King to fill out my postcards. Drove around for a little while looking for one of those little blue mailboxes and pretty soon I hit the road heading for home. I got a couple energy drinks and the plan was just to drive until I couldn't drive any further. At that point I'd get a hotel, but that never really happened. Those uh, monsters really woke me up. I'm really not sure how it happened, but I got all kinds of messed up in Indiana and I had about five hours to my trip driving in a big old circle. I found a rest area I pulled in to try to figure out what was going on and I, I came to the conclusion that I was delirious, so I figured I'd take a nap. I grabbed my phone, I set my my alarm. I slept a few hours. When I woke up, I made the final trip back to Mascuda. When I got to town, I was completely exhausted. I did not drive around town not wanting the trip to end as I had done the previous leg. This time, I really needed it to be over. I didn't sit out in the driveway contemplating the thoughts of the previous two and a half weeks. I could do that when I woke up. I didn't sit around thinking about the mile total, which ended up being just under 5,000 miles. All I knew was that I was home. Leg four was history. The tour was 80% complete. I was 28 for 28 with a perfect run going. And with those final thoughts, I headed inside and crashed. I'd like to say thanks to the crowd in Cincinnati. Great city, great show, even though it remains quite the blur. Cleveland does indeed rock. Thank you. Again, Jason, thanks for the pre-party and the use of your pictures in the end. Look forward to seeing you soon. Svet, thanks for having my back with that Master of Puppets pick at the show. And Michelle, you were right. Thanks for making me go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I had a great time. Everyone else, as always, I'd like to say thanks for watching. If you like what we have going on here, we would appreciate it greatly. If you consider subscribing to the channel, give us a like, a dislike, whatever the case may be. If you find yourself in one of the videos, Please feel free to share it to social media and help us grow the project. Next stop, the beginning of the end, El Paso, Texas. We'll see you there. Until then, rock on. All right, who are you and where are you from? Guys, I'm uh, Brandon Sansvera. I'm from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. All right, how long have you been a Metallica fan? I've been a Metallica fan since I was 11. And I'm 37, so I don't know, do the math. It's been a long time. I'm Efraín Rivera from Ecuador, South America. How long have you been a Metallica fan? Since 91. 91? Yeah, nine old, years old. Old school. Old school, yeah. Uh, my name is Mike Thomas Evick. I'm from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. How long have you been a Metallica fan? I've been a Metallica fan since 1989. Mario D'Amato from Buffalo, New York. Alrighty, how long have you been a Metallica fan? Oh man, a long time. 88? Uh, my name is Darshan and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. How long have you been a Metallica fan? Uh, about maybe less than a year. Wow. Around a year, yeah. My name is Justin Hernansky and I'm from Ravenna, Ohio. Alrighty, how long have you been a Metallica fan? I would say 28 years, my whole life. So have you seen them live before? Oh yeah. Uh, I stopped counting a long time ago, but it's somewhere in the realm of 40 times or so. So tell me this. Why do, you, why do you keep coming back? Is it all about this? Is the music really that good? Well, first and foremost, Metallica is still the fucking best live band out there in the planet. Uh, and number two, the people, the family, and, and how, how this all has come together. Uh, you know, it's one thing to, you know, to go and rock out, but it's another thing to rock out with, with the most awesome people on the planet. You know? Have you seen them live before? Yeah, yesterday was my 18th time. Wow, oh, excellent. This is my seventh show. Excellent. Oh, yeah. plenty of times. It's got to be over 30 shows. Why do you keep doing it? Is the music that good, or is there the more music, to it? The people, 
like collecting stuff, pigs and shirts and stuff like that, like going to the shows. More okay. than one thing. No, this is my first time. First time. Yes. First See? concert, actually. First concert ever. First concert ever. Well, you're about to get my get your world rock. Yeah, I do believe. Hopefully. Have you seen them live before? Yes, I have. Can you narrow it down to a favorite song? Well, my favorite personal song is The Unforgiven, but my favorite live song is The Four Horsemen. There's something about that opening riff that just brings out this animal in me. There you go. So, how about a um, favorite album? You know, that's really a hard one, too. Um, you know, different time periods, different eras. Uh, you know, Master Puppets will always be my favorite. You know, Black Album is probably a close second for the for the deepness, the meanings of the songs. You know, um, you know I, I, I would have to probably go with those two on my two favorites. All righty. How about a favorite band member, past or present? Well, it's got to be Lars. Uh, I'm a drummer for 23 years, and uh, I would have never picked up sticks had I never seen the one video for the first time. First time I ever saw that double bass. The... I was like, that is fucking cool. I wanted to know how to play the drums. Right on. And uh, taught me not only learning about just heavy metal, but just music in general. It started me on a whole different path. Can you narrow it down to a favorite song? Fade to Black. You got to be Fade to Black. Fade to Black? Yes. How about favorite album? Uh, Between Injustice for All and Ride the Lightning. That's, yeah, that's, a, tough, that's a good toss up there. Yeah. Alrighty, how about favorite band member? It's between James and Lars. Uh, no, I, I love Lars. He's just the coolest guy. Okay. Uh, James is uh, the guy. It's hard, to, it's hard to narrow it down. Yeah, between the. It's, it's so hard. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That is tough. Uh, I would say my favorite song would be No Way Clover. That's a great song. You know, uh, We share the passion for that. We talked about that earlier. We'll edit that part out. But maybe we'll leave it in there. How about favorite album? Uh, favorite album, Master Puppets. You didn't even have to think about that. Uh, not even close, yeah. Strong album. Okay, last favorite. Uh, favorite band member, past or present? Favorite band member... Um, Probably most people would say James Hetfield. A lot, dude. Uh, I'm going to go with Kirk Hammett, just because he seems to be kind of like the steady rock of the band. He's there all the time, um, through thick, through thin. Um, I don't know. I just, Minimal I, drama? I, I, yeah, I have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, Kirk's great. I agree. Can you narrow it down to a favorite song? Favorite song. It's hard to narrow it down, man. Anything off the first couple albums. Okay, do you have a favorite album? Master. The perfect album, in my opinion. Um, how about favorite band member, past or present? Uh, favorite band member? I can really narrow it down to just one, I don't think. Uh, yeah, Feet to Black. Feet That's to... a wonderful song to call your favorite. How yeah. about favorite album? Favorite album, Ride the Lightning. Right, like, there you go, supporting yeah. it. Okay, how about favorite? This is kind of an odd question. Um, okay. Favorite band member, past or present? Favorite, uh, Kirk Hammond. Okay, so it wasn't too odd, huh? Yeah. A quick answer. Favorite song would have to be Seek and Destroy for the purpose of that's the main song I learned on guitar. All righty. Throughout the years. That was one of the first ones, and just jam out to that one. That's why it probably has a special place to me. Right on. Do you have a favorite album? Album, I'd have to say. Kill them all. Seek and Destroy is on that. There you go. There you it's go. It's a great album, the first one. Favorite band member, past or present? The almighty James Hetfield. <laughs> That's a common answer. That's a good answer. We come from all walks of life as Metallica fans. What do you do for a living? You know, I, uh, I uh, uh, map and uh, locate underground utility lines. Uh, we uh, we uh, flag them and mark them so that uh, when excavators are digging, they don't uh, blow up the city. So. All right. <laughs> I'm an advert advertising. Advertising? Yeah. Marketing? Marketing advertising. We come from all walks of life as Metallica fans. What do you do for a living? Um, Mason, self-employed. Right on. We come from all walks of life as Metallica fans. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I'm a cybersecurity tech. Right on. I think I met one of them in California. Oh, wow. I am a screen printer here Alrighty. down the road in Twinsburg, Ohio. Did you knock off some t-shirts for the event? <laughs> I 
I mean, I could have worked something out probably. But <laughs> Say no. <laughs> All right, cool. Brewer, Jim Brewer. What did you think when you first heard the announcement before you saw him? And now what do you think about his act? Well, Jim, I've always been an old fan of Jim, even on his Saturday Night Live stuff. I mean, I always loved the Joe Pesci show and the Go Boy skits and whatnot. Uh, and I've seen him uh, alive quite a few times before. Uh, I got to see him with Metallica. Now, meeting Jim and getting to know him as a person is totally different. Dude is one of the coolest, coolest people I've ever met. And he shares the same passion for heavy metal and rock and roll that all of us do. And I think that's what I like about him the most. Jim Brewer, what do you think about that? The Jim Brewer opening up for him? Uh, um, I have been, I have seen his stand-ups online. I like it. I, I think it's a it's a good balance of you know a sporting bag and now. Okay, uh, so no problem with it. No, I don't have no problem. Okay, it's, it's a funny uh, guy. Yes. Uh, Jim has done a great job. Obviously, he's progressed quite a bit from the Madison show, as most of you know. He does a great job in hyping up the crowd, uh, and I think most of the diehard fans enjoy what he brings to the table. The cool thing about Jim is he's a true Metallica fan. Hey, what about Brewer opening up for Metallica? What do you think of that? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'll right. be able to check him out tonight. Jim, I think he's really funny, and I think the way he impersonates uh, metal bands, it's really cool. Very keen eye. You have to have a keen eye to be able to pick out the things he picks out. Okay. The way they walk, the way they talk. It's pretty cool. What do you think about Brewer opening up the show now that you've seen him? You know, what do you think before you saw him? And then what do you think now? I was a little skeptical, probably like some people were. But then uh, seeing it, he just does a great job pumping up the crowd for the for the show, for the band. Do you have one person in your life that you credit with turning on, turning you on to the band in the first place? Or how did uh, you come about being a Metallica fan? I heard Metallica, man, a long time ago. Pretty much, I think one of my buddies gave me a CD, listened to the CD, and that was it, man. All right. From there, pretty simple. Who do you credit for turning you on to the band in the first place? Was uh, it one you person? Too. or Okay. You too. Uh, so one day, I saw Slash playing the November Rain solo, so I decided to pick up the guitar, and then in my recommended, Blacken showed up, and just near the end where the two guitar syncopation part is and the melody... I just really fell in love with that. Just that minute, two minute, and then from there it just... It was over. Yeah. History. Yeah. If the band members themselves should happen to see this, do you have a message for them? Don't stop. Go as long as you can so we can continue to do what we do this way. We want to continue to go to the shows. We want to continue to follow you. The MFF is alive and well. Don't stop, guys. Keep going. If, if Metallica themselves should happen to see this, do you have a message for them? Yes, I love you guys. Thank you for being my force all these years since I was a kid. I've been through a lot of stuff, but I will always get ahead with your music and your energy. Thank you. If the band members themselves should happen to see this, do you have a message for them? Yeah, just uh, thanks for everything that you've done. Um, yeah, like, and keep keep producing music, um, keep touring. There's a lot of us that love what, uh, what you do. Final question, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> if the band members themselves should happen to see this video, do you have any words for them? Just keep rocking, man, don't stop. If the band members themselves should happen to see this, do you have a message for them? Yeah, I just want to say they're very inspirational. All my life I've been listening to music, but I haven't been able to really get into music because I've never really liked anything. But the first time I heard Kirk, Metall uh, Kirk Hammond's guitar, I just fell in love. Enough to come all the way from Toronto. If Metallica themselves should happen to see this video, yeah. you got a message for them? Um, just thank you guys for everything you've done. I appreciate it all. I know everybody else does too. Just keep rocking. <laughs> like Lars says, just getting started, right?
It's another hell Fear to turn on the light For it's permanently night Oh, it's fast as desire Thunder